What up, peeps? It's time for another episode of Gross Point Bake, man. This show is all about the grosses, the money coming in, the tickets bought, the album sales, the shows watched. Now, I don't know what you're thinking. It's been several episodes. Tony, you ain't never mentioned TV shows. That's because the numbers be hard to get, especially now. I don't know what's getting watched. But, you know, I'm going to do TV shows eventually because I'm still trying to do my list of the HBO shows, the most watched HBO shows of all time. But it's hard to get those numbers. But forget all that. That's neither here nor there, man. We're talking the grosses. Opinions be damned. we talking about the numbers. Who's putting butts in the seats? In this episode, since, we you know, Netflix aired The Day Shift with Jamie Foxx as a vampire hunter slash pool cleaner. Let's talk vampires, man. Who was really putting butts in the seats as vampires, man? The top grossing vampire movies of all time. Now, Twilight is out. Animated out. So there'll be no Twilight movies because that'll take up five of the top ten spots. And we're taking out animated. No Hotel Transylvania. Okay? Those will be taking up too much real estate on the list. I want to make this list interesting, informative, if you will. Who is really putting butts in the seats on the vampire tip out here on these streets, man? The bloodsucker streets. I want you, I want you commenting early. I want you putting in without cheating. Who you think number one is gonna be? And with this list, I'm adjusting for inflation. Oh yeah. We get into the nitty gritty. Because when you adjust for inflation, that's when you get to the nitty gritty of the grosses. That's when you know how many people actually bought the tickets, if you will. Number 10. And this is one of my favorite vampire movies. I hold this movie dear to my heart. I remember the night I saw it at the Water Tower in Chicago. The Lost Boys. Starring Jason Patrick, Kiefer Sutherland, Jamie Gertz, Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, Diane Weist, Edward Herman. Let me tell you something about this movie. And side note, do you know that Jamie Gertz is a billionaire? She is literally a billionaire right now. Jamie Gertz, the girl from The Lost Boys, the girl from Twister. She is worth billions of dollars. Google that shit. The Lost Boys made the equivalent of $75.5 million at the box office. Inflated. Made 30 something million in his day. That equates to $75.5 million domestically. Um, this movie was just ultra cool in the 80s, man. The mute, the soundtrack was dope. The vibe, it was just cool. I remember seeing it in theaters and I was just like, yo, and I saw it in Chicago. So I was like, man, California really looks like that. And like, you know, it was just the vibe. People was outside. It was, it was the ocean. It was the beach. It was like earrings and hair and leather jackets. And I was just like, yo, these cats is cool as shit. And it was like the, the soundtrack was another important piece to the movie. And I wanted to be the Frog Brothers. I wanted to be Corey Feldman in this movie so bad. Even as a kid, I was like, yo, these Frog Brothers. When Corey Haim and Corey Feldman got together, I was all in, man. I was all in. I was like, man, these dudes are so cool to me. And the villain, Kiefer Sutherland's voice is just top notch join us Michael you know what I'm saying the whole scene them hanging on the bridge him hallucinating thinking he's eating maggots when it's just rice and it was just like yo he fed him a full course meal but none of it was real just a dope vibe I love the mom Diane West is playing the mom and she was so adorable trying to raise these young boys on her own just got divorced and grandpa was up in the mix man it was just a dope movie and it's still good to me and that dog that saved Corey Haynes' life, man, come on, man. The Lost Boys was cracking, man. It's number 10 on this list. $75.5 million at the box office. Number nine. Dracula from 1979. <laughs> I ain't never seen this movie. Never seen this movie. I feel like there are several movies called Dracula, so it's just like Dracula, this, they got creative. 
Dracula in this movie is played by Frank Langella, who's a dope actor, uh, Academy Award nominee for sure. Maybe he's even won one in his career. I'm not sure, but I know he's been nominated. He played uh, Nixon in Frost Nixon. Uh, he's a vet. He's been around for a long time. He plays Dracula in this joint. Never seen it. Never heard of it. Directed by John Badham. And uh, I was just like, okay. Uh, I made... 21 million dollars in 1979 that equates to about 76.7 million dollars today so it put butts in the seats and you know dracula's the main guy dracula he, he started this gangster shit so whenever you got a movie about the guy then you know people are gonna be like oh the guy huh the guy count dracula blackula will not be on this list although i wish it was um but Dracula from 1979 is number nine with $76.7 million at the box office. I looked at the trailer for this movie. Should look just mad. <laughs> and he made it a point. He was like, yo, I never want to have fangs in this movie. I don't want you to see my fangs. And another stipulation about me doing this movie, I never want to do interviews or appear in any type of promotional press as Dracula. He was just like, look, man, these are my stipulations. If you want me for the role, I'll do it. But, hey, I'm not going to be out here in the little suit on in the cape. All right? I'm going to just do this film. I'm going to sit my ass down, man. Dracula, 1979, number nine. Number eight, Underworld. Kate Beckinsale. Underworld made the equivalent of $79 million at the box office, man. If you're not familiar with Underworld, it's the premise, the magnificent premise of vampires and werewolves. That dynamic right there is just always fire to me. And we're coming at it from an action perspective. We took Twilight off the table because that tweeny romance bullshit, everybody was eating that up like hotcakes. And they were just like, all five of the Twilight films would have been on this list. And that would have got boring, man. Um... But Underworld, on the other hand, I feel like they didn't have that built-in audience of a book that was, it was already a book, and there's no, like, teen girl romance element. There's romance in it, but not like that. It's coming from an action perspective. Underworld is more in the vein of Blade and that type of shit. Leather outfits, trench coats, we got guns, we fighting, we kicking ass, werewolves, Vampires, or should I say lichens against the vampires. And Underworld was the, was the first film to kick off the franchise, and it made the equivalent of $79 million at the box office. Number seven, Underworld Evolution. This is the sequel to Underworld. It made $87.2 million at the box office. That means that people like what they saw in the first Underworld, so they pulled up for the second one. Um, not much to say here. Underworld, to me, I think I saw the first two, and then, you know, I, I just kind of faded off. They was kind of feeling the same. And uh, I feel like they lean... I feel like these movies lean heavily towards vampire. I'm more of a werewolf guy myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm team werewolf. I would rather be a werewolf in real life because I won't have as many restrictions. You know what I'm saying? Vampires got too many rules. I can't go to the movies in the daytime. I can't, I can't just, I can't just do shit in the day. I gotta do everything at night. And then the, the garlic, no garlic. I gotta be invited in, which is, I don't mind that. Cause I don't really just show up at people's houses, but you know, I gotta be invited in and I need the mirror. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, when you're brushing your teeth, you're getting your hair together. When I shave my head, I gotta shave my head with no mirror. That's a lot of pressure. Cause you, you, you got no reflection. So it's just too many rules, man. I got to worry about silver, you know what I'm saying, crosses. I I like going to church on occasion. So it's just too many rules, man. I ain't feeling all that. With a werewolf, you just wild out once a month. Full moon come, you wild out, you woke up, you're like, man, wild night. I don't know what happened. There's a random ankle next to you in Central Park. I could deal with that. And I'm still immortal. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? You got to kill me with a silver bullet? Who got silver bullets out here? Who has silver bullets out here, man? Police brutality, gang warfare, they're not hitting me with the silver bullet. I might get hit with a stray. I'm still alive. Give me that werewolf life. Werewolf or vampire. 
vampire. I knew you was gonna pick vampire. Get to lay around all day, look the same age for mad long, be old. Nah, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Give me that werewolf life. Um, but Underworld Evolution, eighty-seven point two million dollars at the box office. Okay, number six might come. That's a bit of a surprise because I feel like people don't talk about this movie. Dark Shadows with Johnny Depp. <laughs> Dark Shadows is number six with $91.8 million at the box office. It was a movie that they considered a failure. Uh, the critics and the audiences didn't really connect, but they connected enough to check out Dark Shadows to get it up to this level. I, for one, thought it was legit. I, I enjoyed Dark Shadows. I thought it was an interesting premise, and um, I remember enjoying it. But uh, they were just like, eh, you know, Dark Shadows. But Johnny Depp is perfect for a vampire. He might be a vampire anyway. So I feel like he was perfect for the role. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about this movie. But it is a vampire movie. It's on the list. And it's at number six with $91.8 million at the box office. Number five. Now we're in the top five. That's the nitty gritty now. Number five. Blade Two. Blade to $128.9 million inflated at the box office. A lot of people go back and forth on which blade they like better. One or two, one or two, one or two. I hear both a lot. Um, me personally, I flip flop personally myself on which one I like more. Sometimes I like Blade 2 more. Sometimes I like Blade 1 more. I feel like Blade 1 had the stronger villain. I feel like Blade 2 had a stronger fight scene and it, they, it just had a stronger premise I want to say the premise was dope as hell um, so I'll go back and forth man I think I lean towards Blade 1 as being the best but Blade 2 comes pretty damn close and the grosses are close because number 4 is Blade 1 137.1 million dollars at the, at the box office domestically Blade 1 kickstarted the Marvel Blade kickstarted Marvel, period. I'm going to just say what it is. You know what I'm saying? These studios were not confident in comic book movies. They made this movie. They made it rated R. It was gritty. And it made money at the box office. And that gave Marvel the confidence they needed to push forward and make other comic book movies. The X-Men follow and then Spider-Man follow suit. They needed something to make money so they can be like, yo... There's an audience for these type of films. Let's get to the money. Be like, man, but the, the, the movies ain't making money. Batman and all that tank. They come out with Blade, a B-list comic book character, and it made the money. Blade, $137.1 million. Man, I, I wish it had made more because I saw it in theaters twice myself. I contributed to Blade. I contributed to this box office gross we looking at right here. I put my bid in twice. On both you hoes, man. Shout out to Wesley Snipes' Blade. Can't wait for the new Blade from Marvel. That's number four. Number three, Bram Stoker's Dracula. $182.3 million. Starring Keanu Reeves and Gary Oldman as the titular character. You know what I'm saying? Gary Oldman played Dracula. He had a big ass head in this movie. I remember that. He just had a big ass head. He was just standing there, <laughs> clapping his little hands. Just, the visual is iconic. I feel like the movie was just okay. It had some dope imagery in it, but I feel like the movie was just all right. Keanu was stiff. You know, when Winona Ryder was in it, it was something missing that I that I just couldn't. I was just like, man, man, some some ain't right, man. Something missing here. But it made decent money at the box office. It kind of it. What it did was it faded off quick. It faded off pretty quickly, and I just feel like it didn't really connect with audiences the way that they wanted it to. And uh, so it ended up with 182, $182.3 million at the box office, which at the time it was like 80 something million dollars in 1992 money. But we inflating in this mug. Side note, I think I made an error in my list, and I think I forgot one entry. Let me double check right here in real time. So if if my if my calculations are correct, that will shift everything down one one space. Yep, show did. Okay, so I fumbled, y'all. Hold on. 
I forgot about a movie. Right above Blade and underneath Bram Stoker's Dracula should be Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. That movie made the equivalent of $177 million at the box office. Van Helsing is above Blade and right underneath Bram Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, Van Helsing came out in 2004. The budget was huge. The hype around it was huge. Uh, you got a you got a big star in uh, Hugh Jackman. Kate Beckinsale was in it, who was also you know in Underworld. Uh, it was directed by the director of The Mummy, so everything was all lined up for this to be a huge hit, and it wasn't. People were initially uh, intrigued. They showed up opening weekend, and then it quickly faded off after that. Van Helsing still gross, you know, 177 million dollars at the box office, but the budget was 170 million so in this domestic run initially it only made 120 million domestic uh 300 million worldwide but the budget alone was 170 million dollars so it was just like nah we ain't really make no money off this right here so it was considered a box office disappointment but on this list made a the equivalent of 177 million dollars inflated so it did a little something so in actuality lost boys would be number 11 so coming back up to number two, Interview with a Vampire. Number two, that movie made the equivalent of $235.9 million at the domestic box office. Interview with a Vampire starred uh, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Antonio Banderas. It was the introduction to Kirsten Dunst. And, you know, it was a hit in this day. Uh, based on the best-selling novel by Anne Rice. So you had that built-in book-reading, you know, audience that was sitting right there. Brad Pitt was just catching fire. Tom Cruise was already one of the top box office guys. So it was just like, you know, people weren't happy about the casting of Tom Cruise initially. Like, him as Vampire Lestat, people were pissed off. But people are always going to be pissed off when people get casted for their beloved works of fiction. Um, interview with the Vampire did well at the box office, though, man. It made that money. Kind of, it kind of faded off pretty quickly. It didn't have a lot of stand power, but um, it made the equivalent of two hundred thirty-five point nine million dollars by today's standards, which can, you know, it's considered a, a hit. Number one, and I asked Sabrina. I double checked. I asked Sabrina. I was like, "Yo, is this movie considered a vampire movie?" And y'all can argue me down in the comment section, but technically, they were vampires. I Am Legend. I Am Legend is the number one vampire movie. This could probably be debated since they weren't your traditional looking and acting vampires. So I don't know how y'all gonna take it. Slarita's saying no, but Slarita don't like stuff. Struggle Struggle Beard is saying nah. Um, these two are saying it don't count. But technically... They weren't zombies because they didn't come out in the daytime. They were nowhere to be seen in the daytime. So this this could be debated. If it is debated, if you want to take I Am Legend off the table, then that would make Interview with the Vampire number one. So I think it's do they suck blood? I don't know what they do when they get you, to be honest with you. Because we never, we've never seen the I Am Legend creatures get somebody. What, what they do do, if they bite you, you turn into one of them, which is technically what a vampire is. So I don't know. I don't know. If, if I Am Legend is a vampire movie, it made $338.9 million at the box office. If we are, if we are calling it a vampire movie but if not if we taking it off the table that means interview the vampire is the champ lost boys goes back to number 10 and we can just leave it at that but technically many consider this to be a vampire film so i don't know y'all tell me but i am legend made 338.9 million dollars at the domestic box office so there's that and that's my list the top 10 highest grossing vampire movies of all time domestically without Twilight and without Animated Fair. 
Let me know how you feel about I Am Legend being number one. What's your favorite? Uh, 30 Days of Night and oh, yeah. What We Do in the Shadows. The movie? Yeah. Okay. If you've never seen What We Do in the Shadows, please watch it. Movie and show. Thank you. Um, it's been my TED Talk. 30 Days a Night is the scariest one for me. Man, 30 Definitely days the night. scariest. Yeah. It's so good, yeah. man. It's definitely the scariest vampire movie I've seen. My favorite vampire movie is probably Blade. Blade probably be my number one. Honorable mention, Near Dark, Let the Right One In, and Let Me In. Both dope. Oh, uh, and The Lost Boys. That's my mom's favorite. Which one? Let Me In. Let Me In is fire. Fire. Um... My mom is a huge vampire head. Uh, she's going to be all over this episode. Yeah, she's going she to she call you. She's going to be like, no, nah, Ask her if she know. considers I Am Legend to be a vampire movie. I'll call her right now. Ask her right now. Call her and put on the mic. Amir, you got a favorite vampire movie? Bet. Also, honorable mention to Fright Night. Fright Night almost made the list, but it, it, didn't, it didn't measure up. All right, she called it. Sabrina's calling her mom right now, y'all. We about to see. Let's see what she's saying. Watch this the one time she don't pick up. She Sabrina pick Sabrina up. felt like I Am Legend was a vampire movie. Let's see if mom follows suit. Man, where you at, She bro? probably won't pick up. She always picks up. Wow. Oh, we got the voicemail. So I'll let y'all know what her mom said later on down the line. But that's it. Top top 10, 11 grossing vampire movies of all time domestically without Twilight or Hotel Transylvania in the mix. Let me know your favorite um, vampire movie in the comment section below. Also, let me know. First of all, let me know what's your favorite on this list. Let me know. If you consider I Am Legend a vampire movie. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. Hold Sabrina's mom is here. Mom, you've seen I Am Legend, right? What? You've seen the movie I Am Legend by Will Smith? Yes. Do you do you think uh-huh. those are vampires? Yes. Well, they're not vampires. They're like zombie and vampires. But they're va- the word vampire is still... Yeah. Okay. And what is your favorite vampire movie of all times? Of all times? Of all times? Yeah. Um, I what they call that? Oh God, it's an old old one with um. All right, what's your current favorite vampire movie? What's one that you can think of right now? That I loved. Yeah, that you love. Um, the the I like the series that came out. We need um, names, Shorty. No you're you're on the podcast. <laughs> I'm a, I'm on the po- podcast, and you're letting me know right now. Yeah. I don't know anybody's name right now. I can't even <laughs> think straight. I okay. just got home. Okay. All right. All right. It sounds like so you just walked favorite, in. My favorite vampire movie was um, what you call Blackula. Blackula. Okay. Remember saying? Yeah, the one with um. Yeah, my mom. She said that before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I love that one because it was kind of funny, but it was really scary at the end. Yeah. It got really, really bad. Okay. And The Lost Boys is another one. Okay. Yeah, that's Tony's favorite. That's my kind of one of my favorites too. All right. But I, I will go with Black Killer before I go with um um The Lost Boys. The other one with The Lost Boys. Okay. All right, okay. mom. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yo. She said thank you. <laughs> check out uh, check out Near Dark. I feel like not enough people have seen Near Dark. It's got Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton, and it's it's dark. It's directed by Catherine Bigelow, who um, directed The Hurt Locker and Point Break. Near Dark is a scary vampire movie. There's, there's this one scene in a bar. It's terrifying if you put yourself in that situation. Check out Near Dark if you haven't seen it. It didn't make a lot of money at the box office, but it's absolutely one of the best uh, vampire movies. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Gross Point Bake.